Uh, hello, nice to be with you again and thank you very much for joining me. The numbers are going up and I'm very grateful. Today I'm going to talk about Gaza, what has become of Gaza and the causes that made us arrive to this calamitous point. As I'm recording, it is the 28th anniversary of the Oslo Accord. The Oslo Accords, for those of you who don't know, are the peace treaty that was signed between the Palestine Liberation Organization and the Israeli government in the United States of America. Most of you will remember the reluctant handshake of the Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Rabin, with Yasser Arafat. That handshake caused us a lot of trouble. First, it allowed Jordan to have the courage to sign a peace treaty with, with Israel the following year, 1994, called the Wadi Araba Agreement. And it gave Israel what it desired most, recognition and legitimacy. The Palestine Liberation Organization gave Israel the right to rule over 78% of the land mass of Palestine and they got nothing in return. What they got is a promise that they will be allowed to have autonomy in the West Bank and Gaza. They did not even get that. But that's for another topic. The Oslo Accord gave us the longest occupation in history, more land theft, more illegal settlements, and more illegal settlers in the West Bank and loss of land. When they signed the accord on the 13th of September 1993, there were 110,000 illegal settlers in the West Bank and Gaza. Today, we have 750,000 illegal settlers in the West Bank. Because in 2004, the then Prime Minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon, was advised by a demographer by the name of Professor Aaron Sofa of the Haifa University to withdraw from Gaza and close it shut. That's what they did. I'm going to paraphrase what Professor Sofer said. He advised Sharon to close the gates and when the two million inhabitants of Gaza become animals and come, they come to the fence, we, i.e. the Israeli army, will kill, kill and kill every day and every night. They withdrew and they will say to you, there we are, we gave them back Gaza and they gave us Hamas. More of this later. In 2006, after the death of Yasser Arafat, there were elections in Palestine, general elections, under the observers of the international community. Hamas won those elections hands down, as attested to by the observers, one of which was President Carter. Of course, this did not suit Israel, the PA, or America. So they conspired amongst them to declare Hamas a 
terrorist organization. When does when is a person who is protecting his land from the occupier is a terrorist? Occupied people have rights enshrined in, the, in international law to defend themselves. But of course, Israel is the exception. After the elections and, and Hamas being declared a terrorist organization, Israel sealed Gaza from land, sea, and air. Nothing goes in and out without the agreement of the Israelis. And when you know that the Israelis passed the law called keep them on a diet, you can imagine what kind of goods and equipments the Israelis allow to go in and out of Gaza. The Israelis were not alone of tightening the vice around the neck of Gaza. The PA is a partner to this siege and unfortunately Egypt under President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is a part to this siege. Not only keep them in a diet but get rid of them is another doctrine of the Israeli government. They call it mowing the lawn. And the lawn here, my friends, is not made of grass, is made of people. Two million people. To mow the lawn, they periodically attack Gaza and use obscene amount of ordnance and the latest technology of war and killing. The first attack on Gaza was in 2008 and they call it cast lead. In that attack 1,390 Palestinians, mostly civilians, were killed and four Israelis. After Cast led in 2008, they attacked Gaza again in 2012 and they call it Operation Pillar of Cloud. That attack resulted in 171 Palestinians killed and six Israelis. That was followed by a massive attack in 2014, which they called Protective Edge. That resulted in 2,100 Palestinians killed and 72 Israelis and an enormous amount of damage to the infrastructure of Gaza. And it doesn't end there. This May, four months ago, they attacked Gaza again. 256 Palestinians were killed and 12 Israelis. I've never heard Gaza described better than this when a young Gazan who was with me on a panel in London said to the audience what the Israelis did to us is they put us in a cage, they put a padlock on it, locked it and through the key into the sea. How apt. People always describe Gaza as an open-air prison. It is not a prison. It is a concentration camp by design because 
if you are in a prison, you have rights. Three meals a day, a shower, exercise, reading material, television, internet, etc., etc. The Gazans have no right, not even fresh drinking water, not electricity, not the internet, not food, not medicine, not jobs. Are we civilized to allow this to continue to happen? You tell me. Thank you for listening. Bless you.